What's up, everybody? I'm the Hook. And I'm the Blade. And together we're, you know. Welcome to the Netblade Flicks cast, the show about all things Assassin's Creed. The standard Pokemon book blade. There's two parts. I'm your host Lawson, joined as always by your host Tim. Tim, listen, um, I'm really starting to feel like I ask you how you've been every week, and you never ask me how I've been. Oh, I'm sorry. How have you been? Well, I'll tell you, pretty good. <laughs> I've achieved something of a personal goal or dream that I've had for the last seven years. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm really excited about it. Did you ever play the game Tap Tap Revenge? Not even a little bit. Yeah, Tap Tap Revenge was actually the first ever popular iPhone game because it existed before there was an app store on iPhone. Interesting. You had you had to sideload it. It was a really popular mobile game from like between, you know, 2007 to like the version I played was Tap Tap Revenge 4. So it was like the fourth version. And it it came out in 2011. And I played it a lot on my iPad, and it was my favorite game ever. I'm like a slut for rhythm games, like Guitar Hero, DJ Hero, things like that. I've noticed that. I've noticed that. This is one I can play. I could play on my iPad when I was like 11 years old. I was really good at it, too. Like, I would be playing shit on extreme mode, and my fingers would be fucking flying across the screen, all ninja-like. Uh, intense precision, 99% accuracy. It was a very nostalgic thing, but Disney bought the company that made it, Tapulous, in 2013 and removed it from the App Store forever. And because it was like an online service thing, there was no real easy way to like get access to the game or any of the songs that were on it. I've been like missing that game for seven years and wanting to play that game for seven years. And every once in a while it would like the nostalgia pangs would strike. And I'd like Google, how do I play? How do I play tap tap revenge? And there would be like, Oh, first you have to root your phone and then you have to do a, you know, you have to fucking do a seance and commune with the dead. And then you have to, you know, take your phone apart and then rebuild it from scratch. (laughs) And I was like, I'm never going to do that. And finally I cracked and I, I, I did surgery on my phone so I could play a tap tap revenge and I'm the happiest I've ever been. So it works just fine. It does. Yeah, it does. Um, well, I mean, y- you have to do some crazy shit to, to get it to work. Like, you know how you were lamenting all the stuff you'd have to do to like modify mass effect to get your controller to work on PC. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, think that times for like, (laughs) think doing, no, no, no. Listen, you have to do that process for every song you want to add to the game. Oh, no. Okay, so how many songs do you have added at the moment? 37. 37? I I stayed up all night putting all the songs I wanted (laughs) on my phone. So assuming, you know, because it got deleted from history in 2013, you can only add songs pre-2013, right? Oh, yeah. The only songs that exist came out between the years 2011 and 2013. Well, how is there 37 songs within that two year gap that you want to add that much? I was I've always been, I've always loved music. I listened to a lot of music at the time. But what's funny is here's the actual like the, the great thing about it. When I was a kid and I played, I only played the songs I could get for free. So there were a lot of songs I found that way that were not popular because they were, you know, available right. on Tap Tap Revenge for free that I'm nostalgic for and that I wanted back. All the other songs that were actually popular that you actually wanted, you had to pay for. And I was 11 and my parents could buy me an iPad, but they could not buy me a song on Tap Tap Revenge 4. So now that now that it's all available on the Internet, I've gotten all the songs that I would have wanted but couldn't buy. So I'm I'm living I'm kind of living the dream. <laughs> It's really nice. That's I really, all. I just feel like, <laughs> like how you feel about Honey Smacks is how I feel about <laughs> Tap Tap Revenge. 4. I, I thought this. I thought the story was gonna go that like Disney relaunched it, you know, or like they no. put out a new version. I did this all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you should. and I wouldn't have it any other way because if Disney launched another version, it would be all the new songs. And what I want is to play the shitty free songs that I 
grew accustomed to in 2011. But so well, the good thing is, is now all the hard work's done and you can just enjoy it for now. The hard work's done and I can just pop it open every time I want. There's some hilarious jank. Like if I get a notification specifically that I'm low on battery, the whole app will just dis- just destroy itself. <laughs> It'll just close. Um, for a while, it seemed like every single image that the game needed in order to function was just going to appear in my gallery. <laughs> so, and I went on Snapchat to send you a meme. I saw like I had to scroll past 300 miles of in-game graphics. I did find a way around that. So it's, I'm literally running software on my 20, 2018 ass phone that was designed for 2010 phone. So it's like a postage stamp size screen. <laughs> It's, it's really I've gone really I've gone too far honestly but that reminds but me, it's so much fun dude that reminds me of the of the sc- <laughs> of the screenshots that I used to send you where <laughs> like our, our Skype conversations where it, it's like a quarter of my actual phone size now. <laughs> yeah, my face takes up the whole screen. <laughs> it totally does. That's so funny. You can't even fit my nose onto your like iPhone 3GS looking ass screen. Back then, dude. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we got a lot to talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> Other news. Ubisoft did us a huge favor today, and they actually let us all know I'm sure they were doing this on purpose. They let us all know that they're making a uh, a live action Assassin's Creed television series for Netflix. Yeah, and they told us just before we started recording this. So yeah. we get <laughs> they, get, they little... called us. Netflix called us. Yeah, they they gave us an advance notice. They said, "Hey, Hookblade, listen, we're about to announce a Netflix TV show." Just as Lawson has always wanted. It's true. You can vouch that I have been clamoring for a live action Netflix Assassin's Creed series for pretty much as long as I've been alive. Yeah, that that has been your biggest like request out of a live action Assassin's Creed adaptation is that it it, it could make a good TV show. You've always said that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I I I'm hoping for your sake that it that it turns out good. I have <laughs> no I have no expectation. Listen. I just observed recently that Assassin's Creed is the video game equivalent of like a moderately watchable sci-fi show, right? Like really this property, sometimes it feels like a sci-fi channel TV show. Yes. And so I'm hoping that when they do it for Netflix, I think there's a smart way to lean into that. Like I think there's a way to take advantage of the elements that give it that feel, but still tell like a grounded, complete, and, you know, distinct and well-told story. But I definitely think that... Like anything else, like any other idea, if it's good, it's good. Like whatever approach that they take with it, hopefully it turns out all right. And I think that the nice thing about live action Assassin's Creed, as we've, as was true with the movie, is that there's a lot more impetus to lean into the iconic elements of the brand that the games haven't had much interest in lately. Yeah, 100%. There's a lot of recognizable things that if you chose to omit for a TV show, that people would be like, oh, well, if, for instance, if someone just catches like a teaser of a leap of faith happening or a hidden blade, people yeah. know what that is and that will make them interested. They can't bastardize um, this medium for AC just yet because those are all the things like they can't do Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the TV show. They just can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, no one will watch I feel that. the same way. They 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 can't they can't lean into the things that are making the game so well because your average Joe that's going to go watch the Assassin's Creed TV show is doing it for those things. They want to see the 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 iconography and they want to see assassins and stuff. And and so yeah, they want to see assassins in the Assassin's Creed show. Imagine that. That's that's definitely a benefit <laughs> for us overall. Yeah. Though I I just I can't get that stoked about it. I'm still just waiting for the anime. That's that's what I'm waiting for. I understand that you're waiting for that. I I I think it's well suited to anime as well. It'll be really interesting to see if, I mean, I'm presuming based on the way Assassin's Creed has always operated that theoretically this anime and this TV show and the games and everything would all be taking place in the same universe. And considering how bad Ubisoft is at coordinating a narrative direction across just their own video games, the idea that they're going to make it work to the extent that the 
TV show and an anime that's been in development since 2017 and a video game coming out, you know, maybe next year that's been in development for maybe six or seven years now. The idea that that's all going to fit together cohesively is going to be, let's just say it, impossible. There's no way. It's right? going to be a train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, you equally can vouch that I think AC is best outside of the games that it's best in animation. Like it's, it's going to, I think that's where it's, it has the most potential. I think that makes sense. And and, and that's the thing is, I mean, like I, I tweeted about this, like, I, I feel like there's a lot of elements of the series that to do them justice, I feel like you need that, that kind of animation magic to make it look cool. Because as we know, like from the movie, there are, there is a, there are a few times where like, it kind of looks a little silly. We all know what the leap of faith looks like. We know, like, all these movements are pretty iconic. The iconic, like, hidden blade maneuver that, like, Altair does, like, that's such an, an iconic image. And it'd be hard to replicate that in live action and make it look cool. You can do that in animation one to one, and it mm. would look awesome. Hard for you or I or your average, you know, maybe amateur filmmaker, but like, that's something that the movie actually did pretty well. The assassin stuff in it looked great. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that the problems with that movie had nothing to do with how believable an assassin doing parkour and using a hidden blade was. That stuff like looked pretty awesome. I suppose all I'm really all I'm getting at is I feel like there's a lot of limitations that I, I do think that like the right person could make it look good in live action, but the chances of Ubisoft getting yeah. that right person is are slim. So but when it comes to like animating those things I, I just i feel like you can represent them better maybe i'm having a hard time explaining it like i feel like a, a leap of faith just look would look more natural in like a cartoon series and it would having an actor do it using special effects there's a lot of aspects that just might not look appropriate like the leap of faith in the movie i mean you're you're right is okay you're you're right i like yes obviously i think watching a video game character or a cartoon character do a leap of faith is going to be more believable than watching michael fassbender do a leap of faith that said, it wasn't like I watched Michael Fassbender do the leap of faith and I thought, this doesn't make any sense but at all. But that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm saying is we are so used to, in, in the video games when we're playing them, we do a leap of faith, it's seamless. It's all, it's, you know, one take, if you, you know, if you will. There isn't any cut in the action. It's all seamless. And so a cartoon sure. can show fucking an assassin jumping off a building into a, into a haystack in all one uh, frame. And, and, as, and it doesn't miss a beat. That's dip, more difficult within. But a movie can do that, too. It didn't do that, though. It cut like six different times when he was in the air. Just because they don't, even if they don't do it in a single uninterrupted take, doesn't mean they can't do it in a single well, uninterrupted take. I don't think that's a great point, Tim. I don't think that's a great point at I'm all. I'm not so much saying that like, it's not possible, but to make it look as one-to-one -one with the game, you'll have an easier time with an animation. Anime, animation, cart, you know, whatever you want to say. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and completely disagree here. I think that animation, the 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 benefit of it is you can go hyper real and you can do things that are exaggerated. And as you saw uh, with that really badass, there was like an anime teaser for Assassin's Creed Origins. You remember that? Yeah, I that well, and, and that it looked great. It didn't look one to one with the game. It didn't look realistic. It just was a stylish animation piece that had really cool, fast flowing like. Gendy Tartakovsky esque action, and right, you know, you can get a little bit more exaggerated with it, and I think that's great. But I think that Assassin's Creed, being primarily kind of a grounded thing, at least it used to be or seems to try to be, like I think that, like I'm not saying it wouldn't be really really cool, but I'm not saying it would better fit the tone or the world either. I think live action would personally. Like I do agree with you that Origins thing, it's awesome. And that is part of why I do feel like every bit of like actual, like, you know, professionally done animation for AC that I've seen has been wonderful. I mean, you know, we see it in numbers and and we saw it in that Origins teaser. And so, yeah, it, it, I'm not I'm not saying it's like super realistic. Like, you know, it's like I'm watching live action happening uh, when I say it's one to one to yeah. the game, because truth is the games are exaggerated, like the movements that you. Yeah are doing in the game it is exaggerated it's not completely realistic i'm not saying that we are going to the games for realism there but right. those <laughs> but 
if you, when you do a live action, you know, you can only do so much with like real parkour. And that's what they lean into with the with the movie, I felt. And that's what they would lean into if we have like modern day assassins. It's going to be all like flashy parkour moves, not so much as we see the assassins do them, but more like Unity esque, like real life parkour moves and stuff. So really, all I'm saying is I don't I'm not saying I need it to be like not stylish or not exaggerated because I do want it to be that. I just also feel like the games are stylish and exaggerated in their own right. And if you are going to utilize that, animation might be the best way to go. Because with live action, you're going to have different interpretations of these things. And lucky for us, Timothy, we don't have to choose between one or the other because we're technically, I guess, theoretically getting both. Right. I know we haven't seen anything about the anime since what 2017. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. And they were, they were going to have Adi Shankar do it, the guy who does Castlevania, Castlevania for Netflix. I would watch that, no doubt. I'm definitely mer- myself. I'm more excited for live action just because yeah. I think, you know, I'm imagining an anthology anthology style where it kind of gets to deliver on the promise of the of the games with modern day. Like you can do so much more with modern day in a tv series than you can in a movie or a game because in a tv show you can you can have a primarily historical story all throughout the season but have quite a few modern day interludes interspersed throughout the episodes maybe even just at the beginning and end and you can tell a complete almost like movie length modern day story in that season of television that's primarily giving you historical story the movie was a little fucked up because it didn't know like what the right balance was. And it ended up just being a primarily modern day story that would occasionally cut to the historical sequence Mm -hmm. for action. Right. Like you were just getting a modern day stakes and modern day characters, and they were transplanting all of the action into the past. And I understand that that makes sense. Maybe if you only have 90 minutes, but I think like most people, for an Assassin's Creed movie, there was just too much modern day in that movie for for what the movie was. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I also think in terms of us getting both, I I, I think if this Netflix show does do well, um, that will that will easily pave the way for any like for any any doubt remaining about like how well an anime might do on Netflix, especially if you have the Castlevania guy yeah. behind it and. Uh, you know, I mean, The Witcher is doing the same thing. The Witcher, The Witcher has the live action series, and then I guess they're doing the animated movie this year, right? It's coming out this year. I think it's this year. Yeah, uh, Netflix is really horny for anime spinoffs, so yeah, it might be exactly that. Yeah, they altered Carbon too. Altered Carbon did it. Cyberpunk is getting an anime on Netflix. Yep. I don't think they're doing anything in live action necessarily, but maybe fuck it, they probably will. Hey Lawson, yeah, I, this this will never happen, but I want to float this idea with you. What if they got Noah Hawley to do it? Oh, <laughs> you would, it'd, be, it'd be really awesome, probably. For for anyone who doesn't know, Noah Hawley is like my my idol. Like, I mean, Darby McDevitt is up there, but Noah Hawley is like, you know. I mean, he's, he, he's done Legion, which is, you know, not my a favorite different show. property that's not anything else that he's done before. <laughs> I think Noah Hawley could do Assassin's Creed well. I think so, too. I don't think he would do it, but I would love to see him try. Noah Hawley does Fargo. Fargo is my like favorite show ever. And I'm literally like, I go to school for TV. So it's like what I study. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Who else, who else would, would you want to see involved on an Assassin's Creed TV show? Probably James Wan. <laughs> Fuck <off. laughs> Or Lee Winnell. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I ever asked him like who he thinks should work on a property, he says James Wan or Lee Winnell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's like kind of a running joke for just us <laughs> or jake gyllenhaal <laughs> dude denny villeneuve can he make the assassin's creed show please i just don't know who would who would who would do it like i don't know what big name who would actually agree to it you know like I, it's gonna be someone that we've never heard of before. michael fassbender <laughs> to, sh- no. to show um, run it <laughs> <laughs> what if they get Darren mcdevitt dude i've d- Beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> Except, you know, then the show would be good. <laughs> then Darby would get offers to write other TV shows and then he would never do Assassin's Creed again. I wonder I wonder if Darby will, will ever tr- like transfer over to writing like a script or, you know, or a TV show. Yeah. I wonder if that'd be. In- uh, I would love to see that, it. That would be interesting. Could you imagine? Because how good his characters are. I feel like he could write a really good yeah. script. And writing a game is harder than writing a show or a movie. So probably, well, no, not probably. It is, but <laughs> certainly. Have you seen someone took a picture of the Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven script all printed out, and it literally was like 
eight four foot high stacks of paper on a table. Well, th- that is probably a part of those scripts. But not only do you have to write like you, yeah. ha- you also have to write any any kind of like dialogue that like enemies call out to you, anything that you call out to your teammates, like all that shit they have to write. So it's just absurd. Well, it's it's more the challenge that that in game in game design storytelling is secondary. Like you have to make a game first and the story comes second. If it's not fun to play, if it doesn't give you opportunities for cool, you know, sequences, the writing's not doing its job in TV. The writing comes above everything else. You can argue that in a movie, the writing is maybe secondary to the visuals, but you know, not really it's still very, 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 very important TV even more. So that's why they, they always say that like TV is a writer's medium and film is a director's medium. Games like writers aren't even in competition for the top five list of people whose medium it is <laughs> for video games. Unfortunately, yeah, um, I agree. As much as I wish that weren't the case, I'm just I'm just give me one second to like rack my brain and see if I have any like obvious call outs for who should do Assassin's Creed. What are what are shows or movies that have existed that are similar? I know that the guys Utopia UK one of the, dude actually Dennis Kelly. That's my final answer. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. You're totally right. Dennis Kelly should do Assassin's Creed. He just did a show on HBO called The Third Day. I have yet to watch, but I've heard good things. Now about that I, it. I'm starting to. I'm kind of wondering. He might be too big of a name. I'm curious if the iRobot guy would be interested. iRobot guy? Whoever the iRobot guy is. W- which iRobot guy? <laughs> Not iRobot. Fuck me, Mister Robot. <laughs> 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 Sam Esmail? Not the Will Smith movie. Not the not, not the Will Smith movie. Yeah, that. <laughs> well, dude, I thought you were maybe talking about Isaac Asimov or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant I meant that guy. I meant Sam Esmail. Like he's dead. Uh, yeah, Sam Esmail is the showrunner of Mr. Robot. I think that would be really cool too. Actually, I think that'd be awesome. All right, Ubisoft, if you're listening, here's your short list. Yeah, I mean, Darby he, he kind of writes Sam Esmail, Dennis Kelly, and James. The Wan. way he kind of writes the Evil Corp dudes are are perfectly Templar guys. Like you know, like they'd be perfect Templars. He'd be all about. I mean, he would make it visually beautiful because that's really important to Sam Esmail. He directed all the episodes of Mister. Well, not all. After like season one, I think he directed all the episodes himself, and he cares a lot about like framing and cinematography and and not just doing it well, but doing it distinctly and uniquely and in an interesting way. Same with his other show. The first season of homecoming on Amazon prime has a very distinct look to it. And I feel like he would come to Assassin's Creed and he'd develop a visual style for it. That was totally unique. And that actually worked to the strengths of the franchise. And he would, he would know how to make it fun and exciting. Cause like you didn't get far enough into Mr. Robot to see this, but there are like really thrilling tight, epic action-packed episodes of that show like there's a whole episode that's presented as one interrupted take diehard style through like an office building and it's genuinely incredible like one of the best episodes of tv i've ever seen in my life so he would do a great job with assassin interesting yeah no i i I... leave leave some comments guys if you haven't thought about it uh yet already and tweeted about it like who are some people in movies, TV shows, you know, directors, writers, producers, etc., that you think, oh, they would be a perfect fit for Assassin's Creed. It's it, it's such a broad franchise. There are so many different directions you can take it. So I'm sure there's a bunch of great options. Um, I, I don't know if I have any aside from maybe Sam, uh, Sam Ismail. I, I don't know if I have any specific names. I'm sure like something will hit me later and I'll go, God, of course it should right. be that. I, I feel like there could potentially be some overlap between some of the Marvel Netflix people and doing this. Ooh, like I could okay. see like, Oh yeah. Like the guy who did season three of daredevil. Maybe. Yeah. He, because he, he did. He, I think he did season four of arrow. Oh, I think yeah, it was sure. season. Maybe it wasn't season four, but it was, it was a season of arrow that he did before. Or even the guy that did season one. Because I think he's not doing anything. Well, the, the the guy who did season one or the guy who did the first two episodes of season one, hey Because it was Stephen S. Knight early on. I'm 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 blanking on his name, uh, so I apologize for that. But there, hey, there you go. Stephen S. Knight would also be a very conventional choice for Assassin's Creed. I don't think he'd do a great job, but he'd be someone they would choose. Because there was a guy who's a bald guy. That's Denight. Okay, yeah. then it was this guy. Yeah, yeah. He just did. I think his last thing was Pacific Rim Uprising. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> I yeah, I think aside from just me giving a specific name, I my hope for it is aside from Ubisoft picking someone, 
I'd be interested to see if it, if we get like a Chris Rock scenario where he where someone approaches them and says, "Hey, I want to do it." That'd be cool because right. that means that they have a history with want like an idea and they want to do something unique with it, like Chris Rock is doing with Saw. So right with Saw, I was gonna yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's an actor out there who's really horny for Assassin's Creed and would love to join the TV show. But honestly, if it's a live action show, I want them not to cast like a big name lead for at least the historical segments. I want them to cast like a really talented parkour athlete who also acts. I want Jesse Plemons in the role, uh, in some, some kind of role. <laughs> yeah, he's very assassin like that Jesse Plemons. <laughs> you no, know, he could just be like a hacker guy. Yeah, there you go. he'd be a great modern day character. He'd That's be an right. excellent modern day character. Yeah, he'd be like the Sean of the the TV show. He absolutely, yeah, <laughs> dude. Big big ups, but also really really uh, not jealous of whomever is going to write on this TV show and who's going to have to figure out what the fuck is happening in the modern day. <laughs> They're going to be sitting there like, okay, we need like a believable world we can convey to people with like consistent groups of people and motivations and, and well, you've got about 13 years of clusterfuck continuity you got to get down pat before you can even attempt it. Oh my lord, there, dude, I the kind of like the rumble in my tummy that I got when I first was thinking about how this show was going to go. The first Civ are going to look so fucking stupid when they pop up. <laughs> they're going to look so stupid, dude. Unless it's someone like Sam Ismail who could do it appropriately. They're going to look stupid, dude. They're going to look they should never. They should never show first Civ people in the TV show. How much you want to bet that the TV show definitely incorporates an apple of Eden? Like, they just can't help themselves, right? I, I think it's one of those things that they, that they they couldn't avoid. Yeah, I think I think they would definitely include one. You just have to, I think. It, they're they're not about to like create a new one or use an obscure one. The honestly though, is... a TV show is the perfect time to use to get creative, do something more observatory like, you know, whether it's a building or a sage or something else for Civ related that's not an Apple because, you know, you have a TV show. I feel like things like the Apple of Eden are really useful MacGuffins more or less in the context of. We have to motivate characters really quickly and easily for a period of 90 minutes or for however long the game takes. And when simplicity is key is in those contexts, when you're making a movie, when you're making a video game and you need to convey information as quickly and easily as possible in a TV show, I feel like you can take your time with it. You can come up with something else, you know, you can have there be a little bit more mystery to it. What I really liked about Francis, when the Marvel Netflix stuff was coming out, it was like, we have the movies but those shows could take 12, 13 hours to develop a character. <laughs> Which they all did not do very well. <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, aside from Daredevil, they all sucked pretty much. But, well, no, no, no. Just Jessica Jones season Jessica one Jones had two pretty good great. seasons. Season two fucking sucked dick. But season oh, one no, no, was no, no, no. You're great. right. One good season. I thought right. I'd watched them all and that the last season I watched was bad. But I didn't watch them all. Season two was bad, and I never watched season three. Yeah. Season two had her mom. Remember her mama? Her mommy? Uh-huh. Her mom also had powers. Her mom's the actress that you had a crush on in Ozark, right? Yeah, because she's got short hair in Ozark. Because she's got short hair in Ozark, and that's your whole thing. That's my entire thing. <laughs> yeah. Short-haired ladies DM Tim at Zero Reason on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's all about. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Long haired ladies, stay out of my DMs. Stay away. <laughs> stay out of uh, his DMs. Stay out of my goddamn so DMs. He's, he's really he's more of a bishop guy than than a Rebecca guy. Oh yeah. Well, Rebecca kind of got some Rebecca short hair. Rebecca kind of got some short hair. Who's a long haired Assassin's Creed girl? Uh uh oh oh the uh I, mm, the uh. <laughs> Main care of uh, Charlotte de la Cruz. We're we're not trying to go to horny jail on this episode of uh, the Hook Blade. Um, yeah, we can't be horny on the main podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for a spinoff podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hook Blade after hours. Um, okay, listen. Let's think here. Let's think. Let's. Do you mind if we think for a minute? No, that, that, I'm I'm gonna message Cole and ask him where the fuck he's <laughs> getting his sources from. 
Yeah, because our friend Colum Blackett on Twitter says that the anime is still happening, but he is the only source confirming <laughs> that the anime is still happening, <laughs> as far as we can tell. He's the only bud. But he's not like, I think it's still happening. He's like, yep, still happening. <laughs> I was wondering if you had... Are you t- are you DMing him right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, I want to tell the audience about... In 2015, I wrote I wrote a pitch for an Assassin's Creed TV show. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, you should. Bring I that had up. a whole idea for it. I had constructed an entire concept. It wasn't it wasn't reinventing the wheel as far as the modern day stuff goes. It was pretty much a main dude character who ends up caught in the crossfire between assassins and Templars. But what I thought was fun that I wanted to do was I was going to go pretty hard on the historical stuff. Where in a nine episode season, you'd actually have three entirely different historical narratives play out over three episodes apiece. And the first one I wanted to do, like I thought, I thought it should start with something that did directly tie into the game. So I had like an Arno story in Paris, and then it was gonna go to like what were the other things I wanted to do? Let me see if I can literally find the document. In the meantime, I wanted to point out to you. Yeah. Another reason why I think animation works better is if they ever happen to use Arno or Connor or whoever, they don't have to worry about casting them. They can just get the voice actors again. Right. That's another benefit because casting, like, remember there was some, there was, there was some speculation that Ezio was going to be in the, in the Assassin's Creed movie. No matter who they cast, someone's going to have an issue with it. Everyone loves Ro- Ro- Roger Craig Smith. They could just get him the voice of character again. If they did an Ezio thing, I don't think they ever would, but they could. One of the things was a, was a John F. Kennedy assassination story for the TV show. Kind of expanding That's, outward from the thing I wrote for our whole Veritas Lux thing that we were Right. On. So, yeah, yeah. So I was going to I was just going to reaffirm. So it, that that's completely separate what you're talking about right now. It was like, uh, you know, inspired. But that was yeah, it was a whole separate idea. Colm says that he saw a deadline article and they said. That Netflix has entered an agreement to develop live action, animated, and anime series based on the international best selling video game franchise. So, really, not still happening. Well, if, if, if Deadline is to be believed, there is the live action series, and then maybe the it's being repurposed. The the old the anime that was announced years ago maybe is re, being repurposed. There's still a possibility for it. Because didn't they talk about what doing an anime for Splinter Cell uh, recently? Well, yeah, no, yeah, they're they're doing a Netflix show for Splinter Cell, but I thought that was live action, or am I wrong? No, I think it's anime, or at least it's animated. It might not be anime, There's, right? You know, a distinction. But I think all that that deadline article is speaking to Tim. I think all it's speaking to is that they have a deal with Ubisoft that they have the license to develop live action and animated properties based on their prop on on their on their games, and. Of course, we know if they were talking about making an anime in 2017, they do indeed have the license to do that. Doesn't necessarily mean it's still in development. I hear what you're saying. I do think, though, that given the specificity of the of, of that, and they're not just saying, like, an agreement with Ubisoft to develop multiple things, like, they're, they're being specific about what they're developing. I don't quite know what the difference between animated and anime, like, I know the difference generally speaking, but what I mean is I don't know how an, an animated Assassin's Creed show would be any different than just doing it in the anime style. Read me the quote again. The streamer has entered in a content agreement with Ubisoft to develop live action, animated, and anime series based on the international best-selling video game franchise. Maybe they're going to do an animated movie. I think what we need to to think about here is what it really means for something to be in development. Because... Development in the Hollywood context is very different from in the video game context. Development literally just means that an executive somewhere is thinking about doing it. Like anytime there's like, okay, we have an executive producer and they're figuring out, you know, who they want to hire, what they want to do, that's considered in development. And then it eventually it enters pre production and you start having a writer's room, you start having set designers working on, you know, location scouts and all of that stuff, right? So in the context of this show, this live action show, it seems to me they're a little further along than just in development, given that they've done this like little video clip announcement. I may be wrong. It may just be in development, but typically a show that's in development or a movie that's in development has no guarantee on any level of being 
like greenlit and therefore produced, right? Right. Like Marvel has a million things in development right now that some of which we hear about, some of which we don't. Like they've been having an idea for a Nova movie in and out of development for like three years at this point, but it's not entered pre production. So it's not considered something we would like think of as being on the slate of upcoming projects. Whereas Blade, Blade, they give you a teaser image and they tell you Mahershala Ali's attached a little further along than just development because it's pretty much greenlit, right? I agree with you because, yeah, I think telling us like what certain producers are on, are on it and giving us a little clip, it's not just like, all right, guys, we'll see you in five years. Like this is near, this is probably near future. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think it's greenlit essentially. And I think that means that they're, once they get, crew lined up and writers lined up it'll be it'll probably be going into pre-production here pretty soon and i think something you said to me that we i don't know if we mentioned the podcast but the idea that they're going to shoot this probably in a volume like what the mandalorian does makes a lot of sense they're doing a lot of stuff with that that makes sense like i i do think if you're trying to bring to life like an historical setting it'd be it'd be so much fucking easier if you did it in it with that technology Oh yeah, and it would look convincing. And for anyone who doesn't who doesn't know, the show Mandalorian, they essentially shoot it not on a green screen or a blue screen set, but in this circular encasement of LED screens so that you get not just the visual of the scene behind them, but they can add VFX and and CGI landscapes in live and they can use the lighting on the actual set of the real environment. So like that's how you get Mandalorian having a completely reflective suit of armor. It's purely to show off that technology because with a green screen set, he would be reflecting green and it would look like dog shit. Right. Anyway, that's the quick version. That's going to be really popular because of COVID now, because you don't have to shoot on location. So everyone can be in a little, you know, COVID safety bubble of people and they can just work in this volume and stay relatively socially distanced on set. I think it'll also pop up, like you were saying before, how much just easier it will be than going on location. I think that'll yeah. also, like, right now it's out of necessity due to COVID things, but also it seems to me like it's alleviating a lot of issues that could come up with location shooting. And yeah. it just makes things look better, it seems. Like, The Mandalorian looks yeah. fucking incredible, and I would have never thought it was shot in a volume. And when you consider what they can do with CGI, even for some of these trailers for Assassin's Creed, like just picture CGI Paris from Unity, throw it in a volume, put an actor in an Arno costume right in the center of the volume, (laughs) and you have Assassin's Creed Unity, the television series. No, I I completely agree with you. I I suppose just to clarify what I was saying about the animated thing is like Embers is an example of this, an animated movie. But like, I feel like it'd be kind of strange if Netflix had the Assassin's Creed anime over here. And then over here is just an animated Embers style movie. Like, I just feel like that would be strange. That's why I don't think they're doing that. Like, I think they're saying, you know, Netflix has the, has a content deal with Ubisoft. They have the license to make live action, anime, animation, whatever they want to do. Right. Doesn't mean they're going to do all of it, obviously. And it sure seems like this is maybe a new thing relatively. Like, Like, whatever deal allowed them to be working on an Assassin's Creed anime in 2017 may not have anything to do with this deal. This deal, I'm getting the impression, might be more universally for Ubisoft as a company and for all of their properties and not just for one game. Because if they're talking about Splinter Cell, it may just be that Ubisoft is literally saying, all right, Netflix, let's work together and just build you a bunch of different franchises based on these best-selling video game IPs. And that makes a lot of sense. Ubisoft has wanted film and TV content, and they've had a division specifically for it for a long time. And I think that the Assassin's Creed movie took the wind out of their sails a little bit, but they were trying really hard. I mean, they had like Jake Gyllenhaal and Jessica Chastain signed up for a division movie, and I'm pretty sure they had someone set up for a Watch Dogs movie at some point, too. I I do think Netflix does kind of provide a like a default viewer base for these things. And they provide like a, a stamp of approval. You like we know yeah. that if they put an Assassin's Creed thing on Netflix, it's going to be watched. It'll it will do well. So that is why it's advantageous for Ubisoft. But also, even if there is some Netflix content out there that isn't that great, when you see oh Netflix original, you know like that is a stamp of approval in this day and age. So I think that will that will validate it for some people more than if it just got released on FX or something. And we're going to see a wave of like video game content like this. I mean. 
There's a Halo series coming very soon, presumably on Showtime. Right. With with Pablo Schreiber as Master Chief. There's a Fallout show from the Westworld showrunners, Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, coming to Amazon Prime. This may be kind of, and hey, you know, like Netflix is already doing the cyberpunk anime. So like, this is a wave that they're trying to ride of like, let's do some co-branding here and let's spread the love from these IPs and get into these different forms of media. And I think that's great because I mean, as, as gamers, as hashtag gamers TM, we do love to see (laughs) our favorite worlds and properties expanded beyond the, the video game expanded beyond the console. This also raises the chances of us getting a good video game movie sometime. Yeah, eventually we'll get a good one. I mean, we did already get a really good one with Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, I guess what I'm saying <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't it was it was fine. I I I knew that you weren't like in love with it, but I, it seemed like Yeah, but people... if you didn't laugh, the audience might think I was being serious. And since you failed to laugh, I had to clarify. I'm sorry. I just was saying Apology accepted. There there will be <laughs> Uh, okay, so on the one hand, I do think that this raises the chances of a good Assassin's Creed movie or any or a video game movie in general. There's also if the, the chance... TV show's good. I don't care if they make a movie. Like the TV show's better than the movie. That was I was was gonna say. You fuck was if there's a good Assassin's Creed TV show, there's no need for an Assassin's Creed movie anymore because they can actually do more on a TV show anyway. Yeah. So 100%. fuck the movie. Fuck the movie, dog. I've always said that like if they wanted to get rid of modern day in the games, which <laughs> they just put it in a TV show. They should put it in a TV show and then let the TV show be a lot of modern day stuff and let it interact with the game a little bit. Like if the story of the show involves a historical exploration through the animus, maybe you have a side character who's also in the animus and what they're living are the memories you play in that video game that came out that year. And that's never really a big part of the show, but it gets you just enough surrounding it that you can like watch the show and play the game and you can feel like you had a complete experience. And that's the only way to make it truly optional for the game players. I know by, by the way that many people listening to me say this are like, that's stupid. And I hate that idea. I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just saying like, it would be better than no modern day at all whatsoever anywhere. Or it'd be better than no modern day in the games, but it's also in the fucking comic books. There right? also is a lot of, yeah, I mean, just in general, though, if not that, there's a lot of opportunity to to expand possibilities in the universe. And who's to say that there still is modern day in the games, and then we're just seeing modern day somewhere else. And in the games, we can read emails that's about, about the happenings that's happening yeah. in the TV show somewhere. They already do that stuff. You already can yeah. read emails about what's happening on the Altair 2. How about we see what's happening on the Altair 2 in the show, and then in the game, yeah. we just read like database entries about it. Like That'd be cool, I think. Plus, while I think it'd be weird to cast actors as like historical characters we love like you know i think you made a joke on twitter about like that's why you know it'll be weird when jason statham plays Ezio. <laughs> but like <laughs> but like for modern day characters for, <laughs> I, I just it's your own joke <laughs> no, no, no no i just i'm laughing at the just the uh, image of Jason Statham. Yeah. That's you. It is that's, pretty that's, funny. That's, that's what I'm giggling at. Oh, mate, are you one of the Patsy cunts? <laughs> Boy, you cunts. <laughs> All right, mate. I'm Ezio Auditore. <laughs> I keep kind of accidentally dipping a little Australian. <laughs> I promise. Jason Statham. I'm not He's laughing at my. Of, <laughs> it's like not a breathy sort of thing. It's still a little cockney, right? You gotta do some more Etsy quotes. Nothing is true. Everything's permitted, yeah? <laughs> Vittoria Agli Assassini and the like, right? <laughs> so, you can do the Desmond, do the Desmond, do Requiescat and Pache. Wait, wait. Requiescat and Pache. <laughs> No, no, no. I got. I can do it. I'm really kind of fucking it up because it's Italian. Um, I don't have a frame of reference for what a British dude sounds like speaking Italian. Wait a second. Who is this Desmond? Who's this Desmond bloke? Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> All right, look. No, but my thing was, you can cast like a live action 
person as any of the modern day characters because their face has changed every game. Dude, Sean already just looks like Danny Wallace. Please have Danny. Wa- <laughs> please put Danny Wallace in the fucking show, guys. Please. Well, that was he looks like Sean. He sounds like Sean. He is Sean. He is. He's one to one. Sean. He's a, he's a little tubby. Just a little. Yeah, he's maybe not like I think they made him a little handsomer for the games, but <laughs> but no one's gonna see him as Sean and go, that's not Sean. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, he's obviously he sounds just like the motherfucker, so who cares? Yeah, we already know that the voice of Sean is more important because in the audio drama, we all know that that's technically Sean. If you know what I mean, <laughs> they uh, they should bring Kristen Bell back for the TV show, dude, dude, that, dude, 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 that'd be that'd be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> dude that'd be sick <laughs> dude dude that'd be really cool <laughs> um <laughs> holy fuck remember when there were those rumors that robert downey jr was going to appear in the assassin's creed movie as Ezio? not specifically was that actually a rumor that was actually a rumor yeah no i i, I i'm sure I, if i looked at like an article of it i would remember it but that was a while ago so do you think they should, for the TV show, should they cover any historical stories or characters we've already seen, or should they exclusively do independent stuff? I'm thinking the best route would be independent stuff because like, I don't want to see Leonardo da Vinci played by anyone other than the guy he, he, he's voiced by in the Ezio games. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely don't want to see Ezio without Roger Craig Smith voice. Well, that that's the thing. That's, that's why... I think maybe the, they can dub over Robert Downey Jr. with Robert Roger Craig Smith. I, I think the animation has RCS and RDJ together. I think the animation has a leg up on that because they could bring back the Leonardo da Vinci actor and it'd be and no one would have a, have a complain about that. Carlos Faro, I think, is his name. So I yeah, I think they could. But they could. That's the thing, right? We always talk about this with the comics. They could they could explore a, an obscure historical time period. Imagine imagine they do Japan. <laughs> <laughs> or, or china yeah and you know what the assassin's creed tv show can also probably do a female protagonist <laughs> you're like a you're like a hot ninja <laughs> you're like a you're like a hot ninja <laughs> assassin you know, that but awesome that that's brings a, up an, that's a cheeky little reference to one of our earliest episodes for you that that brings up an interesting point though lawson because i think whether or not they will do it in an historical you know, side of this story is up in the air because I think it's obvious. But at the same time, a strictly modern day Assassin's Creed TV show, I think, would still get people excited. Not a chance. Not even a little bit. I disagree with you. I think when you consider it would get us excited and maybe some people who listen to this show and nobody else. If you look at like my whole point when I made that video about Assassin's Creed Odyssey, like how the brand has now but like doesn't really mean much of anything all that it does mean to anyone anymore is historical setting if historical setting is the one thing that defines what assassin's creed is at this point but then you need a historical setting considering like the the general public when they think about assassin's creed has maybe no idea there's a modern day element at all but keep in mind keep in mind it lawson who's going to want to like watch an obscure ass historical setting like that who who cares like they want to play in a, in a historical setting that's why people are so into Dude, like egypt and you Black know that Flag. historical drama is one of the largest genres of television right because these are popular time periods this tv show is they already cover all the popular time periods not going to italian no, renaissance they haven't. what yes, about they all have. the popular time periods they can't play what They're, about world World War II, dude. You think people don't watch World War II shows? All right, look, that's a fair point, but all I'm saying to you, all I look, you're you wrong. Fuck, all I'm saying to you is, <laughs> a, in a lore of the histor- of the historical theme parks, is because you can go play in them. No one is gonna be like, I can't wait to watch that ancient Egypt TV show, uh, uh, unless people watch ancient, ancient Egypt TV shows. Unless they are into ancient Egypt, dude. I, listen, I'm not saying that. Historical fic, like like the Vikings. There's so team- many settings that Assassin's Creed hasn't touched. You think in 13 games they've hit all the ones people want to watch TV shows? Then why in? do we deliberate about what setting they're going to go to next? Because they're not. They're going to save the because interesting- there are 500 settings they're going to go to. They're going to. They're going to save the playable ones for the games. They're not going to go do Japan in the TV show. They're saving that for the games. I don't think they have to choose. Like I think they could do Japan in a TV show. Not and be- do Japan not in the game. not before they do I the game. I think they could go. 
I th- yeah, I think they could go to any of the settings they've already been to in the TV show. That could very feasibly happen. I do want to clarify. I'm not saying that I don't think that the, like the show couldn't interest people with a certain historical story. I just think a big part of why we love Italy in AC2 and in the Roman Brotherhood is because we get to run around in them. Yeah, but like that's not a comparison that like your average person watching on Netflix is going to see. Like people go watch Black Sails because they think pirates are cool the same way they'll play Black Flag because they think pirates are cool. I mean, historical settings in TV shows and fiction are, are very, very popular. Is all I'm saying. So and I like, agree with you, but it's not a hard sell in the slightest. I just don't think that you're going to have a good time. Like the guy who goes and watches the Borgias isn't going to go watch uh, Assassin's Creed because that it takes place in Italy. They're going to watch it because you're probably right about that. It has assassins and Templars that, in it. I think that Assassin's Creed as a brand, what it tells people is historical action. Right. And yeah, so you're going to get people who want to watch action on TV. You're going to get people who want to watch parkour on TV. You're going to get people who want to watch history on TV. And, you know, you're going to get like fucking people who like Assassin's Creed. But if you do modern day, people are going to turn it on and go, what the hell is this? I think there is a risk to it for sure. But I still think it's up in the air. And I also think like the Vikings TV show, that's very successful. I will bet you all the money in my bank account right now. There's not a chance the Assassin's Creed TV show on Netflix premieres and does not involve a historical story. There's not a chance. I just think it's a little bit more undecided. I, I, I'm I not saying I don't want them to. I think it'd be neat. I do think, though, that they could totally pull off a modern day only TV show and it'd be fine and people would be fine with it. I don't think there's a single chance in hell that that happens. You know, there there, there is a there is something to your point, though. I The first reply that I saw when I clicked on the Netflix tweet was people saying, or was one person with a lot of likes, and he said, just forget about the modern day story. Just focus on the past assassins. Like, that is a general opinion of AC, and I do think that that is a hurdle that they would have to overcome with doing a modern day only thing, for sure. Or when you consider that, like, if you're someone who's never played a game, because they never talk about modern day in the advertising campaigns, you can feasibly never know there's a modern day story ever. Which means that for most people who know about Assassin's Creed, who might be interested in the idea of an Assassin's Creed TV show, there's a good chance they have no idea there's a modern day story. Because like I said, when I started playing the games, and keep in mind, you know, we were all the way up to Assassin's Creed 3 when I first started playing. I popped AC1 into my computer and I saw modern day shit and I was like, what the fuck is this? I, I suppose, I suppose really just what I'm getting at the end of the day is the reason why, you know, people in their history class was like, yeah, I played AC2 and I learned so much. It's, it's not just because they're experiencing the history. They're also playing it in a, they're, they're experiencing yes. it in a medium that keeps them engaged and they can run around and, with and there will be people and there will be people who are assassin's creed fans who will watch a show set in any time period because they like assassin's creed like when i think about this show like this is like the perfect show for my family because everyone else in my family but me is a real slut for historical television <laughs> you know and like right i'd be there for the assassin's creed stuff but they'd be like "Ooh, it's set in xyz time period that's really cool i'd love to see that and i feel like but i feel like the other end of that is where we disagree is that I think they're going to go to some obscure ass time period anyway. And so your average Joe isn't going to be like the great recoinage. Finally, a show about that. You know, I don't think they're necessarily going to go to an obscure time period. Well, no, a lot of this is speculation. We, who knows? They decided the Spanish inquisition was worth a movie. That's maybe not a blockbuster setting, but it is something people are familiar with. Sure. Sure. And you know what? And to your point as well, the movie came out in a time where the modern day story was still like kind of important in Assassin's Creed, at least more than it is now. I think that's a big part of why it was right after Assassin's Creed Unity and Syndicate. So that may not be a true statement. Well, Syndicate is there's still plenty of modern day story in that game. All, all, all I'm saying yeah. is it's more than it is now. And I think that influenced why there was modern day in that story aside from the obvious of like getting more fast bender and stuff, you know? Right. Yeah. All in all, I think there's a lot of different directions that they can go with it. I'm excited to see what they do. I, do I have a whole lot of faith? I mean, when I see that they're like the two executive producers they have on board are from are, are employees at Ubisoft, I think to myself, I hope they're executive producers in the sense that they like figure out who to hire and they, you know, front the money and not executive producers in the sense that they're running the show. Like, I don't want them to be creatives necessarily on the show, because as we've seen, Ubisoft 
isn't that great creatively at handling Assassin's Creed. That was the whole double-edged sword of the movie is when everyone saw that Ubisoft had some creative control in the movie, they were relieved that like, okay, someone who cares about the property is going to be shepherding this thing. But what they didn't expect was that Ubisoft actually didn't care about the property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it ended up being shitty anyway. Yeah. People were like, oh, great. Ubisoft is, is staying involved. They're going to make sure it works. Just like they do for all the get. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. I, I'm I'm optimistic, and I think talking with you about this has made me a little bit more excited about the possibility. There is that pessimistic sure. side of me that just that just thinks that no matter how much we we discuss about what could happen, it's probably going to either be bad or just fine. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it'll probably be just fine. You know, like, but at the same time, like, it is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to do something really good. And yeah, for sure. Hopefully they take their time developing it so that I can get to LA and put myself in that writer's room somehow. <laughs> and then I'll save the show. The the other thing, Moss, and I think you really touched on something really important at the beginning here. And I completely agree is there is a sense that the show has to stay true to a lot of the iconography. And I think that alone is a good sign for us as fans, because yeah. we will at least know that we turn on this show whenever it comes out it's going to have beaked hoods. It's going to have leap of faiths. And we can agree it might at least have a little bit of a modern day element, which is more than we can say for right now. So I'm optimistic. I'm a little excited. In a TV show, you have like eight to 10 hours with which you can tell a story. That's going to be more storytelling opportunity, really, than any other Assassin's Creed property has had. Even in a game, you know, where you're, yeah, okay, sure, you're spending 100 hours in the game. But how much of it is fetch quests? How much of it is is boring main missions where it's, it's, you know, 90% action, 10% something of a story, right? They don't really get to tell the kind of story that's pure story in an Assassin's Creed game that you can do in 10 hours of television. You just don't. You also have to consider that if you just look up like Assassin's Creed one movie and it's just all cutscenes, you see how much of it is actually just raw story. So even the tele and it's television, four to six hours typically, right? And a television series could could trump that with its time uh, that it, that it could spend on on certain characters and whatnot, you know. And and given that a TV show is a hundred percent story driven, you don't have to make concessions at any point in the story for gameplay. You don't have to 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 contort yep. the narrative around what you actually would be fun to play. That's exactly right. I agree with you. It's going to be great, Timothy. It's going to be amazing. That's why I think they're going to go to some obscure setting, because who cares if it's playable? It, it, they could tell a cool story in it. I think that they will go. Here's my prediction to answer this, this whole question that we've been discussing. They're going to go to a setting that is not obscure, that is very popular, but that would not work well for a video game. World War II is a great example of a game of a setting that they wouldn't do in a video game, but would be beautiful for Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I think that is fair. And I am like, I'm not completely like, no, they're not going to do a popular setting. I just think maybe I'm getting, maybe I'm getting too caught up in like, no, what, what happens is you've disagreed with me. And when you disagree with me, you'd never want to agree with me. No, no, no. I think, I think a popular <laughs> setting, it, like, you don't want to say you're right, Lawson. No, it's not that it's, it's uh -huh, a matter of. Uh -huh. Uh, you wait. contrarian fuck. No, it's just a matter of, well, just for the, for the, for the reasons that I listed, like, like, no, like there's plenty of shit like that that exists already that, that it probably would do the history more justice than that. Still, this will have assassins in it. Yeah, I suppose. I, I guess. I don't know. When someone says World War II Assassin's Creed, the kind of show I'm picturing is not your typical World War II show. Then, then, then what would it you be? Know? What would it be? If not, you're, it, you would have to do assassin shit in the times of World War II. You would have to have someone doing stealth and stabbing people in the but neck. But they would still have to in, be. In a World War II show, you, you either see stuff that's happening around World War II, you see politics, or you see soldiers. So you don't think that you're going to see politics. And assassin doesn't have to be a soldier. You don't think you're going to see politics in an Assassin's Creed World War II show? Do you, do, 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 do you think you're only going to see politics? No, but there's plenty. Do you think there's not going to be any neck stabbing, you daft Okay, fuck? so do you think that your parents who are going to tune into this, they're not going to be like, okay, well, where's Hitler? Right, you can't just run around just stealthing and shit. You're gonna have to oh, indulge and because in the historical Hitler's there, element. It'll be like every other World War II thing that's ever existed. That's all you need is Hitler. All I'm getting at is for the people who <laughs> you you say that the people who are gonna tune into this because they like historical fiction or or you know historical TV shows and whatnot. They 
aren't tuning in to see an assassin stab random people in the neck. They want to see you interact or they want to see the character interact with people who they recognize. Yes, you're going to have to do both of it. All my point is just now is that Assassin's Creed in World War II is not going to look like any other thing. It has it has to look like it though because every other every no, other it every other World War II thing has already done it justice and they can't just sharing an element or two or three or four with other things that have existed doesn't mean it's going to be exactly the same as those things. I'm not saying it's going to be exactly the same, but all I'm getting at is there are, it's not going to be redundant. There's going to be assassins in it. That'll change. Something. I know it'll change something, but there is plenty of World War. There's going to be first Civ shit in that World War II. Right. Thing. They could bring back Dia Glocka th- <laughs> from conspiracies. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> but Dia Glocka. There are plenty of things that they come on. Dude. They're, they're, oh, look, I know, but they're not going to go too far into the weird shit because they know that. Like, like you say, you're, you're like you say, there are people who are sitting down for for the historical aspect of it, not the assassin shit. And they're like, if they just spend the whole time in some obscure ass, like absurgo garbage and they don't, you know what I mean? Like Timothy, we're like, we're three layers deep on this and we need to pull back. <laughs> okay. We're, we're arguing about details within details within <laughs> details. <dude. laughs> it doesn't matter how much politics there are. It doesn't matter if it's in World War II. My point is Assassin's Creed is an IP that has broad recognition and appeal. Even people who have never played a game know what Assassin's Creed is. That's definitely part of the reason why Netflix is going to make a TV show about right. it because it'll show up on the screensaver that plays on your Roku when you leave the <laughs> TV on and it shows you all the different shows and you'll see Assassin's Creed and you'll see a guy in a hood with a hidden blade on and there will be fucking Paris World War II in the background. I don't know. It'll be fucking something. And no okay? matter where they go and, and no matter where they go in settings, as you just said, someone's going to watch it. And so it doesn't matter if it's popular or obscure. It, someone will watch it. And so, Tim, you're pathetic and I hate like, you. When I, when I turn on the fucking <laughs> Marco Polo show, it bores me to tears. I don't care. Yeah, but it's a popular show that. That's gone for like four or five seasons. They're making a spinoff of that shit. Just because you don't care doesn't mean nobody does. Well, well, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, okay, I don't know. I, I don't know why I brought Marco Polo up. I'm sorry. Actually, I understand what you're getting at. You're like, that's not a blockbuster time period, but people still watch it. So Assassin's Creed doesn't have to be a blockbuster time period. You're right. The Spanish Inquisition isn't a blockbuster time period. <laughs> it doesn't have to be one, but it will probably be one. I think. Because they they like to be marketable, they like to make shows that people that people will watch. That's I think that's fair. I think that's fair. It could just be an it, you know it's really like the dumbest thing for us to argue about of all the things <laughs> that we could argue about. Why aren't we well, arguing about the fact that it's a done deal that Jason Statham is playing as you? <laughs> I think either way, and CMA pay la Victoria. <laughs> I think either way, all of this is uh, it's probably going to be in vain because they're just going to do something that we both don't expect. Hopefully. Yeah, because if they did something that you expected, it would suck. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I've I've been the hook. (laughs) And I've been the blade. Hey, wait a second. Before we go, let's tell you a couple of the ways you can help help support the show if you like listening. I've learned, Tim, would you would you believe it or not, Tim? Do you believe it that? Almost half the people who listen to our show aren't subscribed. Oh, man, I, I, I can't believe that. It's true. Uh, so if you're listening and you're one of those people who hasn't clicked the subscribe button, what are you doing? Just do it. Just click it. Subscribe. Come come hang out with us for a while. Ring that little hit the little bell icon on YouTube. And you could and you could tweet at us. You can tweet at us at Hookblade. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review. <laughs> you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Did you know that? Did you know we have one review on Apple Podcasts? What does it say? Five stars. It was written by Nick Barrish. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't have it on me right now, but thank you, Nick, for the review. Thank we you, really Nick. Appreciate Nick, it. Nick, you're a handsome motherfucker, dude. I agree. <laughs> um, so if you want us to call you a handsome motherfucker on the podcast, we promise we will as long as you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> um, but to the rest of you, thanks for for watching and supporting our show. We really appreciate uh you guys. We really appreciate your comments, we really appreciate your feedback. Um, let us know. What do you think about this whole TV show business? What are they going to do with it? What do you want to do with it? What, if you were, if you were making it, what would you do? But also if you weren't making it, uh, who would you hire to do it instead for you? So tell us what you think.
See you next week. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, hold tight. My sister doesn't know I'm recording in here. What's up? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I'm just sitting in the closet for fun. <laughs>